All righty, we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing started here. It is 10 o'clock. Good morning, everybody. This is Tyler Finken, Health Marketing Director at Western Marketing. Uh, first off, I would like to say thank you all for uh, taking time out of your days to, uh, to be with us on this webinar today. Um, today we are uh, going to learn about Cigna's new Flexible Choice Cancer Heart Attack and Stroke product, the, uh, the new 2.0 product that they just rolled out. Uh, today we've got uh, our regional sales rep, Mr. Jim Codney with Cigna, that's going to uh, do this webinar for us. So Jim, thank you uh, for being with us today. Um, I think you guys are really going to like the enhancements that they've made to this product, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, but not only are we going to talk about product, we're going to talk about how to uh, position this product and sell this product to your clients. And with everything going on right now with the uh, coronavirus, we're going to uh, touch on how to do everything from the comforts of your own home over the phone. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Codney, I will turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Tyler. Good morning, everybody. Um, hey, thank you very much for, for joining us today. I know, um, you know, it's a really crazy, uncertain times uh, out there right now. And how fortunate are we to work in an industry where we have the ability to help people, um, especially in times like these, help them with their health care choices and really help protect them and give them peace of mind. So, you know, today, like Tyler said, uh, we're going to spend a little time talking about our new version of our lump sum cancer, heart attack, and stroke product. I'm going to tell you, um, you know, some best practices that I've found on who's a good client for it, how to talk to them about it, you know, start that conversation if you've never had that conversation before. And then we're going to get into our e-app. Um, I think you're really, if you've never used our electronic application and done a phone sale with Cigna, um, it's a really nice process we have. It, it's not invasive to the client. Um, doesn't make them jump through a lot of hoops. Um, we do have a whole suite of products at Cigna and everything we uh, offer at uh, on the supplemental benefit side can be sold over the phone. So that's Medicare supplement. It's the lump sum cancer, heart attack, and stroke that we're going to talk about and focus on today. We also have a hospital indemnity product, uh, an accident product, a cancer treatment product, and a final expense. So we've got a whole bevy of products, um, and they're all eligible to be sold over the phone. But we're here to talk about cancer, heart attack, and stroke. So we're going to get going. You know, before we get into the changes that we've made here at Cigna on our product, um, let's talk about, you know, sort of blue sky, the need. Um, you know, when I started doing this presentation uh, several years ago when I joined Cigna, I was thinking about, you know, when I was young and I used to sit on my dad's lap. He was in the service for 29 years. So he'd come home from a busy day and sit in the recliner. And, and that was, you know, way back when we didn't have remotes and we had to get up and actually walk across the room to change to one of the five channels uh, that we got. And then, um, you know, so what happened? And and I used to watch the news and I apologize, the the webinar kind of is moving in and out, but used to watch the news and there used to frequently be uh, stories on cancer, heart attacks, strokes, cardiovascular issues. And so I thought to myself, when's the last time I heard the news talk about that? And and as I was thinking, it, it hit me really now, the news only talks about it when somebody famous either gets diagnosed or dies from it. So, um, you know, you, you can you know that Luke Perry died of uh, if you're my age and watched 90210, he died from uh, a stroke. Um, and then Burt Reynolds, the bandit, uh, died from a heart attack. People thought initially that Tom Petty died from a heart attack, found out that he had some other things in his system that contributed. But what I'm getting at is it almost seems like we've accepted these things as part of the way of life um, that we're going to have to deal with. So if we've accepted those things, which frankly, I don't think we should think that it's, it's going to, it's bound to happen or, you know, but if we are, what a great opportunity to bridge that conversation with your clients, you know? So 
this is what we've done with our product. We had what we thought was a really good product. It was our number one uh, ancillary supplemental health product, um, but we made it better. We reduced our look back periods from the 10 years all the way to five years. Now with that, we did not touch rates or commission. So all we did was reduce the look back and left that the rest of the product pricing alone. The other thing we did was we kept the six riders we had and added four more riders. So what that did is it made it, in my opinion, the most comprehensive lump sum cancer, heart attack, and stroke product in the market today. Uh, you can sit down with your client. You can offer them a lot of um, benefits if they want and need them in one product that will get one bill from one company each month or each quarter, however they want to pay. So it's really nice for them. And it's really a flexible product that you can customize because of that. Not only can you customize it with the riders that we'll talk about, but you can also customize uh, the amounts of coverage inside the cancer, heart attack, and stroke that we'll get into. It, it is very easy sale especially if you're looking to transition out of phone sales. I've talked to agents as recently as yesterday, had an agent I talked to, we were texting back and forth and he said, hey, let me call you right back. I'm on the way uh, up uh, to front door to go to an appointment. And he called me two minutes later and I said, hey, Bill, what happened? And he said, uh, they asked me to reschedule. And so we talked about that and he said it's happening more and more. And unfortunately, I think at least for the short term of our business, that is going to be more the norm than the exception. So with that, I think finding different ways to do business and help shield our customers, help prevent issues, you know, with with finances and stuff and get them insurance products they need is is probably more important now than it's ever been before. So this product uh, is very flexible. You know, it, we'll get into what the payment can cover. It starts at 18 and goes to 99 in most uh, markets for new business. Uh, California stops at 64, but the rest of the states, 18 to 99. Um, so it's a really, really nice uh, product. We don't care what other insurance they have from a different insurance company. We don't care what network or doctor they go see. It doesn't matter. If your client makes a claim on this product, Cigna pays the benefit directly to the insured or if they have passed to the beneficiary. Um, and, and if you think of it this way, the other good thing, especially when you're selling over the phone, is if you're selling Cigna, you don't have to sit and really dis, uh, explain who the company is, right? We're an internationally known brand. We're a Fortune 15 company. So if you're selling Cigna, especially when you aren't face-to-face, -face, you need to build that familiarity instantly with your client. Telling them that it's a Cigna product helps that sale, helps affirm that the product you're talking about is a good product from a good company. So let's talk a little about the need before we get into the, the product here. Um, you know, if you look on the bottom uh, left in that blue circle, you know, about 40% of men and 30% of women are going to get diagnosed with cancer in our lifetime. Folks, that's not a scare tactic. That's not a number we pulled out of the sky, right? That's from the American Cancer Society. And so that right there should tell you that if you are not out selling cancer right now, you're doing a disservice to your customers by not talking about it. And really, if you aren't talking about it, maybe what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna come behind you and not only sell cancer, but then sell other products, maybe your Medicare they're going to replace or your final expense or whatever else products you have, right? So why not take care of your customers while you're there? And if you look at this, there's about 92 million Americans living with some sort of after effects of stroke right now. I mean, 92 million. Folks, there's not 
that's that's about a third to a quarter of the people in the country are living with after effects of a stroke right now. And then when you talk about finance, you know, those middle three, uh, um, you know, quotes or, or phrases really talk about finance, but the first one just scares, scares me uh, immensely. When you talk about it, that the average American can't afford $500 of unexpected costs, you know, if that doesn't tell you that we're providing a service to our clients, I mean, I know a lot of middle class people that we would all look at and think, man, they've got it all figured out and they can't afford $500 of unexpected costs. Um, so there's a, there's a huge need to provide insurance because it's e easier to pay, you know, $15 a month or $30 a month for a lot of people than it is to pay 500 or, or more likely 5,000 in one chunk if they get a diagnosis. Now, I said before, we don't care about networks or where their doctor is or anything because we pay that lump sum directly to the insured or their beneficiary. They can absolutely use the money for anything you see on the screen here. These are your more traditional expenses, right? Medical expenses, living expenses, loss of uh, wages, uh, rehab, prescriptions, all that stuff. That, that, that's all stuff we'd all think about. But the wonderful thing about what we do is we don't care what your client uses the benefit for because what's important to them may not be uh, important to us. So, excuse me. The, um, so we pay that lump sum to your client and what if, let's say, a person gets a terminal cancer diagnosis and they've got all their other expenses covered, but what they want to use the uh, benefit for is a celebration of life trip with their loved ones. That's perfectly fine with us. So with our product, the way we pay in a lump sum, it gives them the, choose, uh, the choice, pardon me, to choose how they want to use their benefit. Now, it ranges anywhere in buckets of money from $5,000 to $75,000 in $1,000 increments. And again, 18 to 99 in most states. Um, really important, unisex rates, no tobacco question, even on the cancer, and no family history question. And it can be sold individual, couple, single parent, and family coverage. So here's how the policy works. It can be sold one of three ways. It can be sold cancer standalone, heart attack and stroke standalone, or cancer, heart attack and stroke together. If you sell them together, what you do is you pick one of those as the base policy and the other as a rider. It's also important to note that they're separate buckets of money. So if your client has both and gets diagnosed with, let's say, internal cancer, they still have the heart attack and stroke benefit available, God forbid, if they ever have a need for that. And those buckets of money could be different. So let's say your client has a family history of cardiovascular disease, so they're worried about heart attack, stroke, needing a heart transplant. Maybe they have a bigger benefit for that than cancer, but they also see the, the risk and the need for cancer insurance. So a client can have let's say 10 or 20,000 in heart attack and stroke and five or 10,000 in cancer. Doesn't matter which one they do, uh, those are different. Um, so it's really important to know you can customize it. It's, it's very flexible for your clients. Here's how our cancer policy works and it's super simple. Our policy covers upon first diagnosis any internal cancer and we pay 100% of the benefit regardless, as long as it's internal cancer. So internal cancer and including carcinoma in situ. So folks, if you don't know, if you haven't been selling products like this, carcinoma in situ is localized cancer. And there are a lot of products out there that still only cover that at 25% of the benefit if that's the diagnosis for your client. Well, folks, well, that's better than nothing. Could you imagine 
getting a call from a client two or three years after you did the sale. They get got diagnosed with internal cancer and they called you because you're their insurance agent to help them fill out the claims form, right? They went in, they got this diagnosis. They're probably wrestling with mortality for the first time in their life. And then they thought, at least I worked with, you know, my agent to buy cancer insurance. That's going to help me pay for stuff for a little while. Well, I worry about getting better. And they call you and one of the questions you have to ask on the claims form is, hey, is it Carstone Institute? And first of all, folks, they aren't going to know most of them, right? Because they aren't medical professionals. So they're going to call their doctor's office. They're going to talk to the the nurse practitioner, or the PA or the doctor that's going to say it's Carstone Institute. They're going to call you back. And then you're going to have to explain to them instead of that $10,000 benefit they might have thought they were getting, that insurance company is only going to pay them $2,500. I've talked to agents, real agents in the field that have had that exact conversation. And to a person, they say it was the hardest thing they've ever had to do. They've delivered debt checks for life insurance, you know, stuff like that. But telling a client two or three years later that they didn't have the coverage they thought they did because of an exclusion, even though the agent did everything right, even had a form signed saying, you understand that this policy only covers carcinoma in situ at 25%, still said it was the hardest thing they've ever had to do. So folks, even if you don't sell mine, please sell a cancer policy that covers that at, at 100%. Obviously, I hope it's mine. I hope you're going to love our product, but really, let's do what's best for our clients here. Now, our heart attack and work work, uh, heart attack and stroke work similar. It covers heart attack in need of a heart transplant at 100% immediately. Now, for stroke, the um, the uh, results of the stroke there has to be lingering effects for at least 30 days for a client to have a claim on the stroke benefit. Now, keep in mind, there's 92 million people in the U.S. that still are walking around with the effects of a stroke. It's very common on products like this. So just a reminder, stroke benefit for that to be paid has to have effects for at least 30 days. But some awesome things we do is we accelerate some of that benefit should they ever need a preventative procedure. So let's say your client has a $10,000 benefit. They go see their cardiologist and the cardiologist says, you need coronary artery bypass surgery. We're actually gonna accelerate $2,500 of that $10,000 benefit to help offset their co-pays and their deductibles to, uh, so they can get that procedure so that hopefully your client would never have a heart attack or heart transplant need or a stroke, right? So we'll only accelerate once and then we reserve the rest should they ever have one of what I call the big three, the heart attack, the need of a heart transplant, or the stroke, right? So keep that in mind. Um, really good thing. We even accelerate 10% for angioplasties and stents, right? So really nice thing that we do to help your client avoid the, the really serious or more serious heart attack, heart transplant, or stroke. We also offer recurrence and restoration riders. Now these are riders. Don't let the names fool you. They work exactly the same. Recurrence is what we call it on cancer. Restoration is what we call it on heart attack and stroke. How they work is if your client gets diagnosed and, and we pay out, we start the clock as soon as they're past diagnosis and treatment. And once they're past diagnosis and treatment, that clock started. And if they hit two years, we built up 25% of the benefit. At five years, 75%. Uh, and at 10 years, 100% of the benefit. You know, and I've had people ask, well, you know, why, do, why, why would I even sell this? Well, folks, did you know that if somebody's diagnosed with, let's say, internal cancer, they're more likely statistically to have a second diagnosis of internal cancer that's, than somebody who's never been diagnosed before. So yes, there is some waiting period. And yes, 
the benefit takes a little while to, to grow, but at two years, at least they've got 25% of the benefit built back up. At five years, they've got 75% of the benefit built back up. And by the way, they're still paying the premium at the age where they originally bought the policy. So even if somebody said at five years, I just buy a new policy, the problem is what if they get re-diagnosed between two and five years? Or what if the premium now at five years is price prohibitive because they hit a, an age band, which happens in insurance to our consumers. So these, these riders are relatively affordable. At 65, a $5,000 cancer re reoccurrence rider is $2.60 a month. So just keep that in mind as you're talking to your clients. These are the riders that we've had. Um, we've got a hospital indemnity rider, an ICU rider, a combo rider of those two, a hospital indemnity and an ICU rider, and a return of premium rider. We sell these all day long. Uh, they're great riders. Um, the return of premium I really like because as you read on, on the screen, if your client's objection is, what if I never, here's what you can tell them. If you're, if you're worried about what if you never get cancer or have a heart attack and stroke, buy the return of premium rider. Because Cigna says if you do that, they will re, uh, pardon me, at death, they will reimburse every penny minus claims paid for the base policy and the rider, including if they buy the benefit builder, which we'll talk about in a minute, back to the beneficiary. So worst case scenario, you aren't gonna lose, you're gonna have peace of mind, you're gonna have something to leave to your beneficiary, Cigna is not gonna get rich off you. And best case scenario, if God forbid you ever have that diagnosis, Cigna is gonna be there for you with a benefit to help you pay for it. And so you can uh, think about how you're gonna beat this horrible disease, not think about how you're gonna pay for it. So it's a really nice rider, uh, keep it in mind. Um, these are the four new riders. So we just added these, um, benefit builder, radiation and chemo, specified disease, and accident indemnity. So let's go through them. Benefit builder, the easiest way I would explain to talk to your client about this is liken it to an inflation rider. You know, and have that conversation. You know, Mr. Smith, is it reasonable to say that if you got diagnosed with cancer today, it would cost more to treat than it would have five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago? Of course, the client's going to say, yeah, everything's more expensive t today. Then you say, well, is it reasonable to assume if you get diagnosed in 10 years or 20 years, it's gonna cost more to um, treat than it does today? And the answer is gonna be yes. If that's what your client's answer is, it's a great opportunity uh, to add the benefit builder. What it does is your client chooses either 500 or $1,000 a year, and basically all that happens is every year on the anniversary, the policy grows by that amount. So as you see on your screen right now, the benefit grows in this $1,000 example. A client bought a $20,000 base policy. In 10 years, it's worth $30,000. In 20 years, it's worth $40,000. And that continues to grow until they have a claim. They die. They stop paying. And so they lapse the policy for 35 years. So it continues to grow. If, if they reach 35 years and then after that get diagnosed, they've taken a $20,000 policy in this example and made it a $55,000 lump sum policy that Cigna just cuts a check for. Now here's radiation chemo. So if you have clients, especially Medicare Advantage clients, I really want you to consider this, but this is really for any clients, even your MedSOP or your ACA or group. Um, I just bring up MedAdvantage because the 20% co-insurance on uh, uh, radiation and chemotherapy, uh, you know, that's very important. But as you see here, what your client does is they choose one of three levels of coverage, prime advantages or supreme. And we actually give them a benefit for immunotherapy injected chemotherapy 
uh, non-hormonal oral chemotherapy, hormonal oral chemotherapy, anti-nausea drugs, radiation, and even experimental treatment for cancer, as long as it's NCI approved. So there's a lot of benefit there, you know, and, and as you see, Prime's the base, so it's the lowest amount of coverage for obviously the lowest amount of premium, and then Supreme's the highest. So it's a really good opportunity to talk to your clients about, okay, you protected yourself with a lump sum should you get cancer. Why don't you consider a radiation and chemo rider on that? It, it'll help you if you have to go do radiation or chemo, it'll help you offset some of the costs you're gonna have. Uh, so really easy, simple uh, rider that, that gives a lot of help to our clients when they need us the most. Um, this this rider I love, it's brand new, Specified Disease and Critical Illness Rider. So this is a lump sum rider between five and 50,000 in lump sum benefit. You can sell it, ages 18 to 74, and it covers everything like ALS, coma, end-stage renal, major organ transplant, MS, paralysis, Alzheimer's, dementia, loss of sight, hearing or speech, and severe burns. And if there's a diagnosis, Cigna pays them the lump sum benefit. Now, it is important to note that Alzheimer's dementia is covered at half the benefit. So if they have a $10,000 uh, benefit for specified disease, Alzheimer's dementia will pay them a 5,000 uh, benefit uh, based on that diagnosis. It's the only one that's limited. I was really happy we were able to get it added even at a lesser benefit because folks, unfortunately, it's a pretty prevalent um, diagnosis nowadays. I know my grandmother who passed away a couple years ago at 98, she had Alzheimer's dementia um, and man, a l little payment from an insurance company, a lump sum, anything would have been very helpful helpful for our family at the time. So a uh, really nice benefit. To give you guys an idea, rate-wise, $5,000 lump sum at 65 is about $1.62 a month for this rider. So really affordable, uh, great rider to add and add peace of mind for our clients. And the last rider is our accident fixed indemnity rider. Um, number one cause of ER visits in the US every year is slips and falls. So if you have clients, it doesn't matter if they're you know younger people or seniors, everybody slips and falls at some point, right? And, and unfortunately, that a lot of times leads to a trip to the doctor, uh, ER, urgent care. So again, with this one, it's similar uh, to how the uh, radiation chemo in the, that they choose one of three levels of coverage, prime, advantage, or supreme. And as you see, it covers things like, let's say they dislocate a hip, right? They have an accident, that's a covered accident. They dislocate a hip. Well, even if they have our base policy, the prime, the, the least expensive, they're gonna get 1,500 bucks. It covers things like hospital ER visits, urgent care visits, uh, even air ambulance visits, uh, not air ambulance visits, but you know, need of an air ambulance. Everything you see on your screen is covered. I know you guys can read, so that's why I'm not reading each line by line. Uh, great option. Our seniors are more active than they've ever been, so if you focus on the senior market, great opportunity to talk to them. But this is even great for younger people, uh, young families or active singles uh, that, that could have an accident. So now we're gonna get into a couple rate examples, uh, really focusing on Benefit Builder. That's the rider that sets us apart, meaning most of the other riders, there are similar things out in the industry right now uh, on a product like this. We have not found a cancer, heart attack, and stroke product that has a uh, rider where you can grow the benefit yearly like this. So we're gonna focus on this right now. Um, for example, on your screen right now is a client, doesn't matter, male or female, 64 years old, buys a $10,000 uh, cancer plan, right? Pretty straightforward. They add the $1,000 benefit builder. Now, what you know, 
what you, I want you to look at is the growth. Now, let's be honest, folks. A 65-year-old is pro or a 64-year-old, uh, so basically somebody T65 for Medicare, they probably aren't worried about a 35-year growth because at that point, they're going to be 99 years old. So most of them don't expect a mortality to last that long. Um, but they do care about 10, 20, maybe even 25 or 30 years because that that's a lot more likely. So even at that, if this client buys a $10,000 policy in 10 years, they've got a $20,000 benefit, 20 years at $30,000 benefit, 25 years at $35,000 lump sum benefit. And guys, that rider only costs that client $11.36 uh, a month. So you take the base uh, cancer policy, which is twenty six fifty a month, at ten thousand for a sixty four year old, and add that rider. You're under forty bucks a month. Um, really great opportunity to talk to your clients about shielding themselves from uh, that inflation that that is very almost guaranteed to happen. Can't guarantee it, but it's very likely to happen. Here's the same scenario at seventy, except what we did was we took the benefit builder and made it a $500 growth. So very similar situation, $10,000 um, heart attack and stroke product instead of cancer, and then a $500 benefit builder, still for a 70 year old, under 50 bucks a month. And then this is our underwriting. Guys, I'm not gonna focus a ton on our underwriting. I will tell you, I think our underwriting is very, very fair. Again, I'm just gonna highlight five-year look backs. Um, we don't ask uh, family history. We don't ask tobacco question. So really nice, fair underwriting. You don't have to be a doctor to go take your clients through our, our underwriting. Now here's where it's available um, and I'm coming. So if you look in the dark blue, any any of the dark blue states, that is available. This product we've been talking about is available right now for you to sell. The light blue states, those three, California, Indiana, and Vermont, we're expecting approvals very soon. Your orange states, those have the product with the original six riders, but not the four new ones. And then the gray states, you know, Wyoming, there's just been some some changes in Wyoming lately. Virginia, New York, uh, we've, we've looked at Virginia. I don't expect us to be in any of those three soon. So hopefully those aren't your, uh, your direct markets. Um, and then let's talk about really the change of the tide, right? We live in the time where it's gonna be harder and harder to get a client to either allow you in their house or to be willing to come to your office. So let's talk about our YAP a little bit with the phone sale. So let's let's set the stage a little bit before we spend a couple minutes on the YAP and talk about who we sell to and how we sell. Medicare Advantage, really, if, you, if your clients, if you've got Medicare Advantage clients, this is what I want you to talk about. I want you to talk about uh, protecting them from maximum out-of-pocket exposure. I also want you to talk about their coinsurance requirement for radiation chemo, which is typically 20%, and how you, you have a product that for a couple bucks a month could help shield them from what could be financial peril. If you have a med sub client, it's a little different sale. I want you to talk about things like deductibles, things like experimental medications, loss of work if they're still working. What about things like travel? People, hey, you know, folks, the number one uh, cancer treatment facility in the country is MD Anderson in Houston, Texas. I will tell you, I've seen with my own eyes, I've talked to people face-to-face um, -face that have traveled to get cancer treatment because if they have the means to do so, they travel. So keep that in mind. And then if it's, you know, uh, under 65, group plan, ACA, really it's copays, deductibles, loss of work and income, things like that, also travel. Um, 
So pardon me, just ways to start thinking about how you're going to set it up. And then, you know, we'll get into after this, we'll get into sort of those icebreakers, those ways to, to start the conversation. So now we're in the app, you've got a client and let's talk about it. You know, so to get into our app, you've got to go into agent view, which is our uh, agent website. And then you're going to click on Express App. It's going to be on the top kind of left part of your screen. Once you do that, that's going to take you here. When you're in this screen, what's great is you can go into any client you've already started. Let's say you started an app and the client had to go or you had to go or something happened. Your internet went out. Well, you can just pick it up and finish that application. If not, you just quit, uh, click on quick quote and apply, and it's gonna walk you through what to do. So what you would do on this screen is, this is what it looks like for policy selection. So what's great is you can choose, let's say you have somebody who wants meds up and lump sum cancer and lump sum heart. So what you do is you click the green where it shows Medicare supplement, and then you would go down to your, the bottom of the screen where it shows lump sum cancer, lump sum heart. You'd click those two because what's one of the really nice things about our app is your client can uh, um, apply for more than one uh, policy on the same app. And if you're selling, you know, let's say you're selling single parent couple or uh, family coverage, if there's a second applicant, if you see on the bottom right hand of the screen where that arrow is, that's where you'd put their information. So you put applicant one in, and then if there's a second applicant, you put that in also. And then this is where you go in and, you know, you start adding their coverage. You're picking what type of plan it is. You're picking the riders and the amounts of coverage. So the great thing, again, about an EAP and REAP is it's going to walk you through piece by piece. It's checking to make sure you're answering all the questions that you need to answer and then telling you, hey, you didn't fill out this or, okay, you're clear to move forward. And then you get to the end of the app and they're going to review and accept it. So meaning you're going to go over what they had. You're going to pick an effective date. You're going to get their social. And then this is one thing I really, really like about our eApp. Our eApp does not require the, uh, the client to make any additional phone calls that they wouldn't have already had to make. It doesn't require them to receive an email from you where they have to go log in somewhere or, or do anything like that. What you do for an electronic signature is you pick a security question and they pick an answer and then they do a four digit security pin and you hit submit. It's super easy, folks. It's really, really a nice process, non-invasive for your clients. And then if they did have to do a phone call, this is where we talk about phone verification. Now, I know when I was out in the field, I didn't like to do phone verification calls. The good news is for this product and most of our products, you don't have to do them. So you do, if your benefits on cancer or heart attack and stroke are more than 50,000, whether it's the policy you're selling, or let's say they had a, one before with us and you're adding more coverage, as long as that doesn't total over 50,000 per bucket of money, there is no phone verification needed if you're doing an EAP. So all you would do is go through the process that we just talked about. You're gonna pick that security question and answer the four digit PIN and you're gonna submit the app. We're gonna get it, make sure everything's in good order, which the, the good news about an e-app is it's looking to make sure things are in good order. So unless you just type something wrong in the wrong box, we're gonna then issue it quicker, pay comp quicker, and most importantly, get your client coverage quicker than on a paper app. So it's a really great option uh, for your customers. And if you if you really want to do phone sales, I've kind of beat this to death, but you know, 
it, it really improves efficiency. And at the end of the day, it, we try and make it very easy here with Cigna. All you do is you call them, you, you talk about the product, you do the app, you only do the phone verification call if needed, which in a lot of cases on ancillary, it's not needed, and then you submit the app. Super, super easy. Now, let's talk about how to broach the conversation with our clients, how to, how to really start that conversation if, if you've never done this before. You know, if you see under the orange opening statements, uh, that's these are a few that we've heard people have used with good success uh, the simple question who do you currently have your cancer insurance with great non-invasive question to ask a client right because you don't care what the answer is if they say what's cancer insurance that's a great opportunity to talk to them and if they say i've got it with company x that's a great opportunity to say hey do you mind grabbing that policy i work with a new product with Cigna, can we check and see if I can give you the same or more coverage for less in uh, less cost? Would that interest you? Um, would you like to add additional heart attack and stroke coverage? Or some people, and, and you have to be the have the right um, way to go about this. But we have some agents that simply say after their whatever else they're saying uh, or whatever else they're selling. Pardon me, whether it's a med sup or or some other product, they say, hey, you know what, just make sure whatever you do, you don't cancel your cancer insurance policy. Again, the great news is you don't care how they answer because it gives you an opportunity to talk about uh, that regardless. If they ask a question, what's cancer insurance, great opportunity. And if they say, oh, I won't, great, can you, can you tell me who you have? You know, if you aren't contracted with us, make sure you call our friends at Western Marketing uh, today. Um, I know they'd love to work with you, and I'm almost done, folks. I really appreciate you sticking with me. Uh, I feel like with everything that's going on, I'm, I'm really excited about the industry we're in, that we're able to help people right now and find different ways to help them. Um, but with that, Cigna's now offering agent incentives. Um, so to qualify on any supplemental health product, that's the cancer, heart attack, and stroke we just talked about, hospital indemnity, um, cancer treatment, or accident, as long as you sell five apps a month with a minimum premium of 30 bucks a month, so an annualized premium of 360 bucks a year, we're gonna give you an additional bonus of $25 per application. And that has no limit. So if you sell 10 a month, it's 250 uh, as long as they qualify. So really good opportunity to make a little more income for doing what you would do anyways. And then finally, we do, we just started March 1st, our qualifying for our 2021 convention. Unfortunately, we had to cancel our convention this year with a uh, uh, coronavirus because uh, we were going to Europe. Next year we're going to Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I will tell you guys, I have been there. Uh, my wife and I went there for our fifth anniversary. It is gorgeous up there. Um, if you've never been, really neat city. Um, they held the Winter Olympics there uh, a few years ago. Just a really beautiful thing. Um, some things to know, what do you need to do to get there? So if you're a writing agent, it's 225,000 in production credits for you and a guest, as long as you're in good standing with us. And what does production credits mean? If you're showing Medicare supplement only, that's 225,000 in premium. If you're selling ancillary products, um, you get three to one credits. Uh, so for every dollar in annualized premium you sell, you get $3 in uh, conference credits. And so we'll do that. We're gonna run, you know, do this uh, contest. We love our conventions. Um, we do not limit the amount of agents and qualifiers. So you don't have to worry about if you're qualifier 51 or 52 or 62 or 112 with us, as long as you meet the production credits and you're in good standing with us, a retention is very important for us. 
Um, but as long as you are in good standing and meet the production credits, you will be invited, you and a guest. So um, with that, I know I've rambled on for a long time, and, and I apologize, but we just had a lot of good um, news to share, good information. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, so Tyler, I'm going to now hop back to you, see if we have any questions that were uh, typed in the question box or uh, if there's anything else you'd like to add. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for doing that with us today, Jim. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, guys, the uh, the one thing that uh, I really want you to take away from this is the uh, the EAP signature process that Jim went over. Um, like you said, it's very, very simple. It is a uh, security question in a four-digit PIN, um, so there's no email involved. That's uh, it's a very, very simple way to enroll clients over the phone. Um, one thing that, uh, that we've been talking a lot to our agents about uh, that have been calling in, you know, worried about this whole coronavirus deal working from home is, you know, how are agents supposed to get in front of people and, and keep selling policies and everything like that. And one thing that we talked to them about is, you know, don't ignore your current database. You know, if you're a Medicare supplement specialist or a final expense specialist or something like that, you've probably got a, a database already at hand that you can start calling people um, on products like this, say, hey, you know, new product with Cigna just came out, I uh, want to talk to you about it, uh, go through the whole thing with them and roll them over the phone, et cetera. It should be very easy. So uh, we've got a uh, an entire sales system built around a cancer, heart attack, and stroke product. I would love to talk to each and every one of you about it. Um, I can send everything over to you uh, in a little bit here. I'm actually going to send you a recording of this webinar as well as uh, the information on the Cigna product and the contracting paperwork if, uh, if we do not have you contracted yet. So uh, before we uh, finish up here, there are a couple of questions that uh, we want to address before we wrap up here. The first one says, do the rates remain the same at attained age? The, uh, the rates will remain the same at issue age. So if you issue a policy to somebody at 65, they pay that rate for the life of the policy. Now that's barring Cigna taking a uh, rate increase on the entire block of business. Is that correct, Jim? That is correct, Tyler, and, and that's a great question. So as Tyler said, it's issue age. It does not change unless we need to file a rate increase. Folks, we've ne never taken a rate increase on this product, nor at this time do we expect to. Think about it this way. We just cut our look back period for underwriting in half and didn't touch rates or comp or anything. So obviously the product's doing really well for us. Um, we wouldn't have done that if we expected to then turn around and, and have a rate increase. So um, I can't guarantee it'll never happen, but I can tell you we do not expect that to happen. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, the next question says uh, there is a new, <coughs> excuse me, there is a new diagnosis of stage zero now. Is that covered under this policy? So I assume the, the question is about cancer and a, and a stage of cancer. Um, our policy is pretty direct. As long as it's an internal cancer diagnosis, the stage does not matter. Any internal cancer first diagnosis, we, uh, we pay. Now it has to be cancerous, um, but as long as it is internal cancer, we pay the lump sum benefit. Uh, the next question says, when it says years without advice, does that mean checkups? Uh, I think uh, what you're getting at here is uh, do checkups count as treatment uh, for either the look back period or the recurrence benefit? Uh, no, checkups do not count. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Jim. Basically, they would look at when the last diagnosis or treatment was. If you have been cancer-free or treatment-free for five years, you'd be able to uh, qualify for this policy, and that recurrence benefit would start to build up. Yeah, that's correct, Tyler. Now, I, I will say there, there's there been some questions I get about treatment or maintenance, um, you know, or advice. Um, Let's let's not get too confused. Advice is pretty simple, right? If a if a doctor's not diagnosing and they're just advising you, usually advice is, hey, go get this checked out. Um, not a problem. 
Um, really, the, the what you want to look at is treatment. Now, I will say for cancer specifically, um, almost all medications prescribed for cancer is treatment. So if there's been a diagnosis and they've got um, a prescription uh, for that afterwards, that is going to be considered treatment. It's not the same on heart attack and stroke. There, there's treatment uh, prescriptions and then there's maintenance prescriptions. So really what you want to look at, especially for underwriting and reoccurrence, is if there was a diagnosis date and then the last date of actual treatment, whether that was a prescription or whatever. Um, other than that, advice is a little gray area. I wouldn't worry about uh, going too much in the weeds on, on what we mean by advice. We're really looking at diagnosis and treatment. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, I do have a, a bunch of other questions on here. It does look like we're running a little short on time. Uh, a bunch of the questions were uh, if we would be able to email a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I cannot send you the actual PowerPoint presentation, but I will be sending you a copy of this webinar in case you want to go back and reference it again. Um, I'm also going to be sending you the, uh, the Cigna product info in PDF format, so you guys should all have that. Um, one thing that I want you all to do right now is if you have a pen and paper handy is, uh, is write down our contact info. Um, I've got my uh, team at Western Marketing standing by waiting to take any questions that you might have. So write down this phone number if you don't have it. You can reach us at 800-852-7152. Again, that's 800-852-7152. Seven one five two. I encourage you uh, to call, speak with your health marketer if you're working with one already. Otherwise, uh, they will get you over somebody who has the answers for you. I do know there are uh, several other questions that we did not address, but uh, luckily I've got copies of all those questions, so I will make sure that either myself or one of my team members reaches out to you specifically and gets your questions answered. So, uh, having said that, again, thank you all for uh, for joining us today. We hope you uh, thought it was very very useful. Hope you guys are all staying uh, safe out there during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. And Jim, again, thank you for uh, putting on this webinar for us today. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Thanks, everybody. Stay healthy and safe. And that's the most important thing. So take care, all right? Thanks, guys.